morning everyone it's good to be with you again today and looking forward to another day of worship together uh, online and we're thankful that you are continuing to participate I have lots of people coming back to the building and we're thankful for that but we're also just thankful that you have continued to tune in online and worship together um, we we feel that connection with you even though it's uh, a little bit different there's lots happening coming up. Uh, we have a summer camps coming up. We're going to talk about that at the end of the service and uh, hope that you will look into those possibilities of things that you can do with your kids and things that you can uh, allow your kids to participate in. And even people that you, uh, maybe some neighbors or grandchildren or something like that, that you could have participate in that. Um, when we uh, start our service, we want to ask you to fill out a connection card. I'm going to put the link here for you so that you can fill that out digitally. Um, if you are new to Crossroads, make sure that you fill that out so we know who you are. And also, if you are uh, have a prayer request that you'd like to share, that's the best way to pass that along to us as well. Um, we uh, also will have a message notes um, that you can use. Um, there's actually uh, 
a bulletin there with it and some of the announcements of things coming up. And then we will have uh, uh, a message slides that we can give you, and that's provided there in the link as well. And then if you have any questions on how to give your tithes and offerings, we'll provide that link with some instructions for you as well. But of all the things that's most important is that our attitude and our heart is right. And so prepare your communion time. Um, it can be anything. It's not important what the elements are. What's really most important is your attitude and your focus. And so let's do that now. Let's put our heart in the right place to listen to God's word and put that into our heart of what it is that God wants us to do and how he wants us to live and what it means to be a family. Let's pray. God, right, thank you so much for all that you do for us. And as we uh, begin to time of worship and as we uh, celebrate um, parents and child um, and the families, I pray that you would help us to remember that it's your creation. It is your system. It is your uh, direction. It is your purpose that we live as families and that we do things together and grow together and and do all that we can to uh, to serve you through our families. And I pray that you will help us to do that. Um, as we move forward with this time of worship, I pray that you will help us to remember how much you love us and what you did to sacrifice your son so that we could be have e- so that we could have eternal life with you forever. Thank you so much for everything you do. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you have a great service, and we'll uh, get started here in just a little bit. Good morning, Crossroads. Just a quick reminder, a few things on the slide up here. We got our communion. If you haven't picked that up, now's a good time to go do that. There are some located around the gym on the tables with the black cloth. Uh, Second of all, if you could pick up the bulletin, in there is our connection card. If you just take a moment to fill that out, and uh, you can place those in the offering boxes as you exit out these two doors over here. They're kind of the brown boxes up on the wall. We're going to stand and worship together. This is going to be a little bit different order of service for us. And wow, young families, I didn't know you guys could show up on time. Congratulations. (laughs) Just kidding. All right, let's stand and worship together. Darkness run for cover Testimony 
not done with you. If I'm not dead, then you're not done. Oh, I believe greater things are still to come. Come on, church. Oh, I believe I'm not dead, then you're not done. Oh, I believe greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe I'm not dead. Then seated. Allow me to pray over you. Father God, just praise your name this morning. And Lord, as we continue on with the service, I pray that you're blessing the different elements of it. Special blessing over um, just the moms. And uh, Lord, uh, all of us have a mom in some shape or form. You know, some of us, uh, it's our natural mother. Others, it's from adoption. Others, it's from just being there. Lord, I just praise and thank you for that model that you gave us. May your name be lifted high this morning as we celebrate the model you gave us of motherhood. Jesus, we love you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, well, one, two, three, let's, one, there we go. All right. 
Well, as you can see, not all of those families you witnessed are on the stage with me today. And um, some of them will be later in the day. But um, I do want to introduce you to the Gonzalez family, the Doty family, the Agard family, and the Sperling family. And they are participating in our dedication um, today. And I'm sure even from the newest of babies to, to the oldest of parents on the stage we have here, right? I'm sure you all have stories to tell. And I'm sure you guys have stories to tell about your parenting journey and your parenthood or growing up. Uh, no matter where that journey has taken you guys, you are here today to dedicate your little precious one all girls, right? All girls at this service. It's crazy, all right? Uh, which is a good thing for my family of all boys. Well, no, I shouldn't say that, should I? Whoa, 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 wait a second. All right. But no, that's not what we're here for. We're here to dedicate our kids to the Lord. And you as a church are here to participate in that. And today, I, I do want to read, this is a biblical foundation that we're doing today. Um, from 1 Samuel, there was a man named Elkanah. And he had two wives, and the one he loved deeply, we know her as Hannah. But Hannah, as you guys know from the great biblical account, could have no children. But every year, Elkanah would take his family to Shiloh, they would worship together, and on this one particular instance, Hannah prayed so hard for a baby. Prayed so hard, and I know some of you, even up here, have prayed so hard for babies. That the priest, Eli, thought she was drunk. You can imagine the tears and the pain in that woman's prayers that day. And here was that prayer. And she made a vow saying, O Lord Almighty, if you will only look upon your servant's misery and remember me. And not forget your servant, but give her a son. Then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life. And no razor will ever be used on his head. Eli heard that prayer and then blessed Hannah and, and prayed that her, her prayer for a child would be answered. And when they got back home, Hannah conceived. And, and here is what she prayed then again. I prayed for this child and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord for his whole life. He will be given over to the Lord. And that's why we're here today. You guys are committing yourselves to the Lord to raise up these precious girls to follow Jesus with their life. Now, if you can continue reading, we know that little boy, his name is Samuel. Samuel became a prophet. Atlas, don't fall off, all right? He subdued the Philistine army. He became Israel's last judge. He anointed King Saul. He rebuked Saul for not keeping God's commands. He anointed Israel's next king, David. So we commit to our lives. We, parents, we commit our lives to growing these young ladies up for God. Imagine what could happen. Imagine the go-getter that she's going to be for Jesus. So we have a couple blessings today. And the first one, church, I'm going to need you to help with. Because you also have a responsibility to not just these kids here on stage and these parents here on stage, but all the kids in the Crossroads family. All the kids sitting here today. So if you're comfortable you can go ahead and extend your hand out towards these families, and I want us to read this as a blessing to them. So accept this blessing from Crossroads. Let's read together. As a church, we promise to walk alongside you as you raise your child to live, love, and lead like Jesus. We promise to uphold you in prayer as you teach your child the amazing truths of our Savior. In the words from Deuteronomy 6, we pray for you to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. That the commands the Lord, keep going, that he gave you will be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, 
when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on your door frames of your houses and on your gates. We pray you will lead your child in their own personal faith in Christ, causing them to grow deeper in the things of him. We join you today in asking for God's blessing on your family as you start this journey. Together we stand in excitement and anticipation to see how the Lord will use your child to further his kingdom. We mean that. And I hope you come alongside in, in, in one way, shape, or fashion and support these guys. Now, you get to witness them saying a blessing to their child. And this is what it's all about. So, guys, it's going to be on that screen back there. You guys go ahead and we'll read it together as you pray over, as you look over, as you put hands on your, your precious girls today. Child of God. You are a blessing to us, and we now bless you. We pray that the Lord will give you joy and peace. We pray that as you grow older, you will grow deeper in the knowledge of our Heavenly Father's love, that your faith will increase, and you will choose to walk in His plan for your life. You are not alone on this journey, your church family will walk beside you. We pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And we pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know that this love that surpasses to the measure of all fullness of God. We have a challenge. And Phil's gonna, Phil is going to switch roles here in just a second. And he's going to take that further and challenge you as a church. We're going to go and we're going to have some intimate moments down the hallway. And we're going to kind of soothe the criers and have some fun and, and give a couple special gifts to these guys. But if you could join me in prayer as we pray over these guys. Father, we thank you. And we thank you for tears. We thank you for, for crying. We thank you for wandering. We thank you for all the many things that are going on up here right now. Lord, we pray for these parents that they understand how deep and wide and, and great is your love for them and for their children, that they would raise their children up for you and imagine the difference that we can make in this world. It's in the wonderful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Am I on? Are we working? Can you guys hear me? There we go. Amen. Well, good morning, church, and happy Mother's Day. Indeed, I'm so glad that y'all have decided to come and worship together this morning. If you're online, special welcome to y'all as well. Howdy, I'm glad you guys are online. Go ahead and type in the comments section the favorite thing you love about your mom, uh, and, and that'll be good. Um, hey, uh, Mother's Day is extra special for my family. As you just saw, Becca is thriving and loving every minute of motherhood, and it was pretty special to get to dedicate our little girl uh, this morning. For many of us on Mother's Day, it's a day of celebration and joy as we get to, to spoil our mamas and, and, and show them how much they mean to us. Uh, Mother's Day has not always been easy for me, though. In fact, for, for a good portion of my life, Mother's Day has had a bit of a scar on it. Uh, I lost my mom when I was nine. If I had to guess, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who has some painful memories that are associated with this day. And I'm not going to go into every reason as to why this day could be difficult. But if we could, I'd like to lead us in another time of prayer uh, before we get into the rest of the sermon. Would you join me in bowing your heads? Father, there's no doubt that today is a joyous day for many women and families in our midst, both currently and in expectation and today, Father, we rejoice with those women who are rejoicing at your gracious gift. And at the same time, Jesus, there, there, are, there are women and families in our midst who have reason to mourn. And God, today we mourn with them. Whether it be unmet expectations or timelines, loss of either children or our own mothers, frustrations with foster care or adoption, Father, we mourn with them and we stand by them and ask for your comfort to be with them. 
with those who have stood tall during the tests of motherhood and have endured so many tests and trials. Father, we are grateful that you have placed them in our midst. We're better for it. For those mamas who, are, who struggle to even get here amidst the outfit changes and the diapers and the fussiness, Father, thank you for putting them in our church family and for giving them the grace to be here today. For those who have painful memories of mom, we, we acknowledge those experiences and we ask for your healing hand to be with them today. God, in all these things, we give you the glory. Amen. Moms, can I address you? There's no doubt in my mind that y'all have so many different roles in your life. I mean, you, you nurture your kids, you take care of a household, you get kiddos to sports practices and, and recitals and, and theater auditions. Um, you read with them, you pray with them, and many of y'all work full or part-time jobs in addition to all these different things. I'm looking at my list, is that it? <laughs> I know that's not it. That doesn't even scratch the surface of all the things that moms do. And so real quick, I just want to say thank you. To every single mom, whether online or here, thank you so much. God has uniquely gifted you and prepared you for, for the role that you have. And I'm so grateful that you have taken up that challenge and taken up uh, uh, the, the task of, of being a mom to your family. So thank you. Thank you so much. Matt just talked about what it means to dedicate children to the Lord. And this morning, I simply want to dive a little bit deeper into what that means. Um, I'm not going to give you the five steps of what it means to be a good parent, uh, or, and I'm not going to give you like the advice of, okay, my kid, my kid did this. Phil, what do I do? Heaven knows. I don't have the experience or the authority to give that kind of advice. You guys can probably amen that. Um, but, but moms, and someone just amen. Good job. <laughs> moms and, and dads and, and grandparents and really church as a whole, this is all addressed to you. The question I want to ask today is, what is the most important role that we can have in, in our own kids' lives and in other people's kids' lives? Perhaps this picture can give us a hint. If you can't read it, it says there's 0.0296% chance that your child will become a professional athlete. There's 0.0086% chance that your child will become a famous celebrity. And there's 100% certainty that your child will stand before Jesus. What are you teaching your children Dustin Binge, the author of this statistic, is a seminary professor in Wales. And this picture rocked me to my core a few years ago when I saw it. And now as a parent of like two and a half weeks, I have to look at this picture with a holy pause. There are a slew of responsibilities that we have. And yet when it comes to priority, both scripture and this tweet, I think, give a pretty uh, clear picture and a pretty different picture of what our responsibility is as parents, guardians, and as the church as a whole. Church, above success, above success in school, above seeing your kid or grandkids succeed in sports or in theater or in their musical talent, above even making sure that your kid is a good person above seeing them succeed in sports, I want to challenge us as parents and as the church with this. Teach your kids, and by kids I mean your grandkids, yous, etc., to treasure the Lord and to keep all of his commands. That's where we're going today. This is the greatest role you can have as a parent. We, we, we see this played out in Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. Read along with me. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And these commandments that I give to you today are to be on your hearts. And here's where this challenge comes in. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. A.K.A. make it a lifestyle, not just a moment. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your gates, of your houses and on your gates. Did you catch the word love in there? The, the word love that we see here is pronounced ahava. Everyone say that with me, ahava. You just spoke Hebrew, congratulations. Hebrew is the original language that this, that this uh, portion of scripture is written in. And this word ahava, it's a broad term. It's not a static or verbal only kind of love. This is a love that's action oriented, not just a sentiment. It, it's... it's 
kind of talking about an affection for or a commitment to the Lord. And oftentimes we hear this word love, and what comes to mind is this screwed up, Americanized cultural version of the word. That's not what we're talking about here. That's not what love means when we're, when we're talking about it here in this passage. Love is not merely this feeling, although there is feeling involved in love, but it goes beyond that and into the everyday actions of a person. It's a renewed and born-again lifestyle that comes directly from God. This, this is a, the lifestyle of a, of a person who has been transformed by Jesus. When I hear ahava, I think of a husband and a wife. I think of a spousal relationship. It'd be kind of dumb to say to your spouse or significant other, I love you, and then leave it at that, wouldn't it? That's a great way to sleep on the couch. Maybe. I don't know how your dynamic works. Um, But if there's no actions, if there's no commitment, if there's no feeling of being treasured to back up those words, the phrase doesn't make a whole lot of sense, does it? It's it's rather meaningless. This word love, it's, it's also found in our passages for this morning in John 14, verses 15, 21, 23, and then again in 1 John 5, 3. It's in those instances on top of several other passages within the book of John and 1 John, where as we look at how John is using this word love, we see he's using it in a way that means to desire, to enjoy, to be pleased with, to treasure. In fact, let's go ahead and look at those, those uh, those different passages. John 14, 15, if you love me, you will keep my commands. John 14, 21a, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. John 14, 23a, Jesus answered him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. 1 John 5, 3, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments, check this out, a little caveat, are not burdensome. Did you see the pattern? If we love or treasure God, obedience to commandments is the natural outcome. The two are inseparable. They they can't be distinct. There's a reason why I gave the main idea of the sermon the way that I did. And oftentimes, I I, I wonder if we try to push obedience before delight in Jesus. Of course, there are moments in our lives when when obedience is not the most enjoyable thing, perhaps. Perhaps we're we're under persecution or we're suffering for our faith. And in, in, in those moments, obedience is not fun. It's not enjoyable. However, if we are pushing obedience to the Lord's commandments on one who does not yet love Jesus, I wonder, haven't we got things a little mixed up? Obedience is all the more often in Scripture viewed as a result of love. Ahava. Agape. It cannot be the end-all thing because teaching morals for morals' sake is not what I see in Scripture. Simply teaching moralism is not the gospel. But a question I was faced with as I was looking at these passages and as a youth pastor and as a new father is, am I teaching kids that Jesus is delightful? Am I teaching them that he's more delightful and pleasurable than sports or theater or school or success or a good job? Or even at the very least, am I teaching them that because he is our highest pleasure, that he is a key and primary place in everything we do and in every activity we partake in? Does my life, both in word and example, tell this message? Can I be a little bold? Can I ask you that question? Do your lives, both in teaching and in example, tell your kids, your grandkids, other people's kids, etc., that Jesus is the most wonderful thing and wonderful and satisfying treasure that could ever happen to them? Is anything right now being exemplified as more important or more valuable than Jesus, or at the very least, is is he being talked about in a way that says that he has a very key and primary primary place in their activities? This is why, as I was looking through these passages, I believe Jesus and John have these things in the order that they do. Jesus then says, hey, you want to know if if you love me? You want to know if you treasure and delight in me? Here's how you'll know. You'll be keeping my commandments. And this leads us to the second part of our main idea. And the challenge that I want to give us from Scripture is this. To teach our kids to obey all, I should have underlined it, of the Lord's commands. If you and I get the first part right, the second part comes a whole lot more naturally. And honestly, this second part is pretty self-explanatory. I'm not even sure I have to go, go and explain this. But I would like to clarify a few things. 
One, this idea of teaching the Lord's commandments is something we see in Matthew 28, 20, where Jesus is giving his disciples the final charge. Hey, go make disciples. How are we going to do that? We're well, going to baptize them. You're going to do a bunch of things. And also, you're going to teach them to obey all that I have commanded. And so when we do this, we're making disciples. But we also saw this in Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9, where Moses was charging the Israelites to make teaching the Lord's commandments a lifestyle as they went about their business and day. It was a moment-to-moment kind of thing. That's the first thing, as we see this in Scripture as being something that parents in the church as a whole is being charged to do. But second, we can't choose which commandments we follow or don't. I haven't found in Scripture where either the apostles, the apostles or the disciples are encouraged uh, themselves are encouraging other Christians to live in obedience in some areas of life, but not in others. I haven't found what I call a pocket Christianity, and here's what I mean by that. Oftentimes, we look at the obvious things like reading our Bible and praying and going to church as things Christians ought to do. We can amen that. There's, that's a no-brainer. We agree that being kind and benevolent and taking care of the, of the poor and the orphan or the widow is good and holy. Again, amen. I have zero, zero qualms with that. However, when it comes to making disciples, which is a life-on-life process that takes time and work, or refraining from bitterness, anger, or gossip, or living above reproach, or walking our lives by the guidance of the Holy Spirit and not our own will, or not associating with darkness, or learning to not live in lust, to love our enemies and to honor our parents, to be servants, to not live in a state of fear or worry, at times we can pocket these and either ignore them or convince ourselves that one day down the road we'll get onto that. I don't bring these things up to bring shame. That's not my goal. It's not my goal at all. My goal, though, is simply to clarify that what we read in the Gospels that Jesus asked his followers is not always the most cozy to look at and or follow. If we are to follow Christ and to teach our kids to do the same, you and I must choose consistency both in teaching and in practice. I'm not sure if you caught it or not, but, but John puts these commands and challenges in the order that he does with the clarifier. Did you catch it in 1 John 5, 3? He clarifies the commandments aren't burdensome. That struck me the first time I read that. I read that and I was like, wait a second. Yeah, they are. I don't want to do the diff- sometimes the different things that Jesus wants me to do. Anybody else been there? But here's why. If we love Jesus and our lives have been transformed by him, Living the way he has asked us to should be an incredibly freeing experience because we're living how God created us to live, which is in obedience and trust with his will and plan instead of ours. Obedience to Christ's commands gets burdensome when our personal will becomes the goal. Obedience to Christ's commands gets burdensome when our personal will becomes the goal. The goal. You might be thinking to yourself, Phil, this sounds great and wonderful. Matt talked about it. You're talking about it. Cool. Can we go to lunch? No. Can I suggest a couple things? Like, where do we go from here? What do we do with this? Here's a couple suggestions. Number one is something that you guys actually already did. Matt walked us through it. But here's the challenge. Choose it daily. When it comes to teaching your kids to treasure Jesus and to follow his commands, all of them, choose it daily. Commit to teaching your kids and others to love and treasure the Lord and to live in obedience to all of his commands. My prayer for us as a church is that this is not a one-time thing that we did on Sunday, May 9th, but this is a continual choice we make day by day. Choose it daily. But then number two, it's a little more challenging because now now it becomes personal. I'm not used to that right there. (laughs) Lead by example. If the goal is to teach others to love the Lord, it is accomplished if we ourselves are committed to what we're teaching. Hypocrisy has never done the church any good. So first, we must commit ourselves to making Jesus our highest treasure and desire and living out all, underline all, of his commandments, not just the ones that don't cost too much. Again, you might be thinking, dude, Phil, you've been a little intense this morning, homie. Like, I don't know if this is all too doable, you know? Can I invite you to dream with me for a second then? If that's you, 
Would you dream with me? What might happen if moms and dads and grandparents and church, we took this primary role to heart? I believe a couple things might happen. I believe we would see the spiritual growth of this church explode if we take this challenge to heart. I believe the spiritual temperature of Shawnee and Lenexa and Bonner Springs, etc., fill in your community, could be transformed because we have committed ourselves to young people loving Jesus and to following his commands with everything they've got. I believe your neighbors who want nothing to do with Jesus right now might see your family and wonder, what's going on with them? I want what they have. I believe your coworkers will ask questions about why y'all are so radical for Jesus and want to be part of the family as well. I believe the children of this church can and will be the leaders of the church to come and of the present church who will do incredible things for the kingdom of God that you and I can't even think or imagine right now. And I believe all of this is possible if we commit ourselves to teaching our kids to treasure Jesus and to follow all of his commandments. Amen? My ask is that you believe with me. I'm going to ask the in just a second the band's going to come on out and we're going to move into a time of communion and worship and so if you have if you have the little uh they call it grape juice we'll call it that too uh and the styrofoam wafer go ahead and start peeling those things back we're going to take communion together but as we move into this time of communion i want to challenge you with a couple things if this is a challenge where you've been, you've been listening to the sermon, you've been like, Phil, you know, that's, that's, that's great. I, I'm not sure I've ever taken that seriously. Today's the day. Spend some time with Jesus. Spend some time in prayer asking him, God, how, how do I do this in my family? How can I make this happen in my life right now? Perhaps this is a challenge you've already committed yourself to. My challenge for you is begin praying for the other people in the room and the other people in our church who are going to be taking up this challenge to raise their families to desire the Lord and to follow him with everything they've got. I'm going to pray and then I'll let you guys have your time of communion. Father God, thank you so much uh, for your word. Thank you that it challenges us and that it pushes us to live more in line with how you would have us live. God, this, (laughs) this challenge to desire you with everything we've got and to follow your commands is, is not necessarily easy. In fact, sometimes it's difficult. But I know that your strength is made perfect in our weakness. So God, I ask that as we imperfectly strive for this, that you would meet us there and you would help us to raise our families in your ways. In Christ's name, amen.
better than you, Lord, there's nothing, nothing is better than you. just uh, lift you up this morning. Thankful that uh, we had an opportunity just to dedicate these young children to you. And Lord, I just pray that you're holding us all accountable because it's, it's the work of all the church to raise them uh, with an understanding of who it is you are by teaching, by modeling, by living. Lord, I just pray that, uh, Lord, we're intentional about living lives that model well for the children what it looks like to love you so god help us we're not perfect but lord there's grace in those moments and uh, lord we strive we want to strive for that kind of perfection you know the model that christ gave us we want to as much as possible live for him live like him so would you under the power of the holy spirit intervene on our behalf and allow us to be those people a church 
that loves you and is known for loving others. God, thank you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming today and uh, participating in the family worship and also the family uh, dedication. Uh, the families that were participating are not in here, but I think they're going to be out there. So make sure you stop by and congratulate them, encourage them, and, uh, and uh, as we all are trying to live for God and do the things he wants us to do. Along with that, we want to really encourage you guys to consider camp this summer. I know last year we were not able to do that, and it was a very sad thing for a lot of reasons, but um, we're back, and we're doing that, and there's lots of things going on. We basically have two full months of just madness of different weeks that you can participate in. So if you go to the website, click on the uh, summer uh, kids and youth programs icon that's on the front page, it'll take you to the events page. On that, it'll list off Hidden Haven, it'll list off a Peak, which is a high school camp, and then it'll give you information on Connect Camps. Um, and it's basically all kinds of different ages from anywhere between, see, Hidden Haven is first grade all the way up to, to junior high. Peak is a high school camp out in Colorado. It's a camping conference. And then uh, Connect Camps is going to be here at the building, and it's from kindergarten to fifth grade. What you won't see on there yet is uh, Matt has decided to go ahead and introduce a, a preschool VBS week as well, and that is not on there yet because we don't have the information, but that's going to come very soon, so make sure you look at that as well. And there's lots of things about that, just plan to do it. Like Phil said on that little graphic that he showed, the, the uh, post that somebody put on there, like we'll spend lots of money, lots of time to make sure that we can give our kids the best chance they can to be the good, best they can at sports, at band, all that kind of stuff. We should do the same thing with trying to build the faith in the, in the structure of faith in their hearts as well. And that's how we can do that through camp. So uh, along with that, um, Connect Camps is going to be happening here at the building. It is actually a Connect Camp that they're trying to reach out to the community. And so they'd like to also provide some scholarship opportunities for families that are not able to afford it. And so they're going to have a golf tournament on May 22nd. Um, and you can sign up as an individual or you can sign up as a team. Matt did say that there's slots available for that are becoming smaller, so you need to do that soon if you're interested. Again, go to the events tab, click the right button, and you'll see this icon. It'll have the information, and then you can sign up to do that, okay? Um, and I think that's pretty much all we have for announcements is we have family dedication, send your kids to camp, and golf. <laughs> Not necessarily in that order, though. I guess you could golf first. But, but let's, uh, let's pray and let's all consider how in our own families how we can and be uh, better ourselves but also better for our families as we live for Christ. God, we thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. And as we uh, look forward to the day, um, as we spend time with moms, as we uh, eat, as we celebrate, and as we um, play games and whatever it is that we have on the agenda for today, that we do not forget you as creator of everything. Um, the family is one of those things as well. And it is a blessing. It is a hardship sometimes. There are difficulties. But without that family, we would have no structure. And it's, it's something that you have really blessed us with. And we're thankful for that. Help us as we enjoy our day to remember the love that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, thanks for coming. We'll see you soon.